name's Adam Hanlon and welcome to Webpixel Live. Um, we'd like to thank Nauticam for sponsoring this episode. Nauticam do a huge range of housings for um, a, a wide variety of cameras. Um, uh, they also do arms um, and accessories as well as some amazing water contact optics. Um, so please head on over to nauticam.com to check out what they do. Um, I'm joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi Adam, look at that. I've even got the right t-shirt on. You have, you're, you're, you're coordinated, splendid. Yeah. Um, um, I thought I'd ask Alex today about um, diving at night and, and ask him whether he finds that diving at night is photographically productive for him or not. So over to you, Alex, night diving. Well, I know that you know the answer to this question because you and I have shared lots of, of, of night dives together. Yep. And, you know, um, you know, you, you're also very aware that, you know, m you know, I have had several, you know, well-known, you know, winning pictures taken with, with night diving. And I am not don't want to, um, you know, n get into a, a sort of a, a horrible name drop situation. But, you know, a person that, you know, through my photography, I've had the chance to talk about night diving with is the Duchess of, of Cambridge, um, the, the yeah. um, Prince William's wife, um, uh, who is also a keen night diver. So so I don't think we should be arguing with her. But actually, <laughs> um, you and I are both, you know, mad keen night divers. And I know whenever we're in, in Lembe, for example, together, we night dive together almost every night. As the number of other photographers begins to dwindle a bit, yeah. you and I are the stalwarts of the night yeah. dives every yeah. night. Never miss a night it's very rare that we miss one, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually remember we night dived even on our day off between the, the trips. <laughs> we so. did, yeah. I was just thinking if uh, so so if we turn around and say we don't like night diving, we could get sent to the tower and get our heads chopped off. It would be terrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, we don't want to mess Future about with queen. that. So yes. I, I really enjoy night diving. Um, not only because it obviously extends the, the diving day, but I think the, the real excitement of night diving is you have this access to photographic opportunities that you don't get the rest of the time. And the reason I say photographic opportunities is it is actually, I think people often say, well, at night you can see all these different species or you can find things more easily at night. Maybe things are active and out. Mm. Um, so, but it's not just about the marine life. The fact that it's dark actually also gives you some opportunity to experiment with some unusual and interesting techniques. Yep. So um, I really like that aspect of night diving as well. Yep. So I think night diving pulls me in because yes, it's when you can do black water. Yes, it's when, you know, on muck sites or on coral reefs, there's more invertebrate life out and about. Um, but it's also photographically, the fact that it's dark allows you to play around with some very different techniques, whether that's painting with light by using, you know, long exposures, whether that's, you know, playing around with 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 off camera lighting, whether it's you know using torch lighting to to try making trails and things like that. There's lots of creative techniques as well that we can do because it's dark and it makes it easier. Mm. I have to say though, I've been I would say that my answer to that question is also a little bit location specific. Yeah. Um, in there are some places night diving is is easy, and I do it a lot. There's some places where night diving is always super productive and it's often the best dive of the day, so I do it a lot. There are other places where actually the interest in that location is not what happens at night. And also maybe it's, it's really cold or maybe it's inconvenient to dive at night because it's, you know, it's long boat rides or there's strong currents in the area and there isn't really an easy place to make a, a dive in the darkness. Yep. And so it's not every trip that I do lots of night dives. And yep. for example, I, I run workshops in Cayman every year and those trips, we never night dive, yep. um, you know, Really, that's a, a, the focus of that trip is on, on on wide angle photography and improving people's wide angle, you know, shooting and use of light. Yeah. And the night dive, I think, is, is too much in a new direction. So although there are good night dives there, there we choose not to do them because they don't fit. So my answer is yes, but it, it, you don't find me mega night diving everywhere. It does depend on whether the destination has got good night diving. You can be surprised, though, too. In that, I mean, I, I did um, some night diving in Bimini. Um, mm. a few years ago um, with the hammers and, and actually that really surprised me as how productive it was photographically because it gave a completely different look to the images you know it was normally that type of hammerhead imagery on the sand mm. the Bahamian sand blue water all that kind of stuff which is great don't get me wrong but suddenly having black backgrounds and you know it, I thought it I thought it lent a real 
different um, feel to the images I was producing. And that was kind of by, by chance, really. It as different as night and day, Adam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it was, and it was by chance. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't some great idea of mine, right, I'll go night diving because I'll get this. Um, and it was, it was very productive. So, yeah, I mean, you mm. know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you've got to be in it to win it. So, you know, um, yeah. it's sort of worth having yeah. to go, go and have I a look. Think, I do think it's a mistake when you hear, you know, and it's a comment I've heard many times on diving liverpools. I don't do night dives. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think photographically, if your photography and the sort of people I go on boats with, they're really into their photography. Yeah. But I think if your photography is a high priority for you, not night diving, I think deprives you of a lot of subjects and a lot of photographic technique opportunities as well. Yeah. And, you know, and like you like you pointed out, the hammerhead, you know, different options with familiar subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So great. So, um, how do we do, it, Alex? What do, what do, what do we need to do to to be successful for taking pictures underwater at night? Then, well, I, I mean, I would say for most places, most of the time, night diving is typically a macro activity. Yep. Now, I know I have many well-known wide-angle pictures at night, and I'm not saying people don't do wide-angle at night. We'll come on to that in a second. But I think your go-to for a night dive should always be macro. I think it's, you know, it, it, it makes for a more manageable photographic opportunity. And indeed, a lot of the the invertebrate life, the, the you know, the crabs and, and 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 shrimps and that sort of thing that come out at night are small. So it does suit macro photography at night. It's a lot easier to find macro subjects when everything is dark and you're looking in a torch beam. And actually, it can be really useful for finding animals to shoot the next day as well. Yeah. Um, for example, um, when I used to live in Italy, um, when we wanted to find seahorses in a certain area, we would always dive it at night first because right. seahorses were often they often came out of the, the shelter of the seagrass at night and you'd spot them. Yeah. Um, but they were also much easier to see in a torch beam at night. And then we wouldn't actually photograph them at night because we didn't want really photos of seahorses at night in the dark. But because they, they were so sight attached. You yep. go back the next day and you'd find them in the same area much more easily because you knew, OK, a seahorse lives in this area. I'll search around and I'll find it. Whereas yep. if you don't know one lives there, you don't search hard enough. Yep. And so it can be very useful for, um, you know, for, for, for running through those things. I, um, I actually I actually tend to often turn it around as well. And often I find I'm quite productive on sites that I've dived in daytime, particularly, you know, dive in the afternoon and then dive the same site in the evening. Because I kind of, OK, we've got a changing of the guard. We know the critters are going to move about, but some of them don't move a great deal. So so, you know, you can often find go back and, and find find similar critters um, uh, similar places in similar positions. So um, I also find it helps me sort of geographically orientate myself to where to where things are on the reef as well, which um, I think night, that's, night that's is a challenge. Really, yeah, a really good part of preparation is, yeah, if you're not super confident as a night diver, yeah. diving a site that you've dived that day, yeah. I think, you know, gives you those bearings and makes you uh, much, much better set up. And if you are ready for it, you right. tend to be better photographically. So I think that is really important. So yeah. equipment wise, macro is a first thought. Yep. A relatively simple rig is always a good thing at night. Um, you know, you don't want to go down with a million accessories. You know, it's more think about what you want to do and go down more focused. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't put things down on the sand and you might then waste 10 minutes trying to find them again and that sort of That's thing. Right. So yeah, yeah. yeah, keep it simple at night. Certainly, you know, if you don't do it all the time. Um, if you do want to do wide angle at night, think very carefully about what subjects you're going to have. Um, you may want to introduce some off camera lighting, either continuous lighting or or off camera strobes, because wide angle at night can leave you with a lot of black um, in the pitch, a lot of you know empty space. Um, it can look fantastic, but a lot of the time it can be 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 um, not very work work very well. You also, if you're going to do wide angle at night, you really need to be on top of your lighting. If you don't have your lighting right at, at night, it will show up. So I would encourage people to go macro if not. The obvious piece of equipment that you add to your your um, your dive gear when diving at night is a focus light. Yep. Um, and most people like that focus light to be mounted in line with the lens. I think in certainly in my early days in underwater photography, people tended to mount them on strobes. Yeah. Um, because there weren't such good focus lights around. And I, and they were so difficult to use. Yeah. And when I bought my first mount to be able to mount it on the camera, and it was actually like a molded rubber thing for holding the the um, 
for holding the torch, which you then had a, a Velcro strap that went around the port. It right. made such a difference to my productivity at night dives. Okay. And obviously these days now, most of our housings are designed with a, a cold shoe or something on the top or a cold shoe even on the port for mounting on focus lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we are very lucky to have those things because I remember the era of when it was actually really hard to mount a, mount a focus light. You know, on a Nikonos, for example, yeah. you know, you didn't have an obvious space to put a focus light. No. Um, so yeah, those things, you know, so for it, so I think that makes really a difference. Focus lights, we've done whole episodes on before. Yep. Um, the main thing I would say is you don't need it to be the brightest light in the world, but I like it to have three functions. I like it to have a flood mode, which is a white wide beam, which tends to disturb animals the least. Um, and it's, it means you've got some flexibility on aiming. You can, um, you know, aim it slightly away and it will still get enough light in the area. Um, I like to have a, um, a focus point beam, which I tend to swim around with because it's easier to spot things in that with beam. And particularly beam. if the visibility is low, you yeah. don't see so the spot beam. And then it's nice to have a red light beam. Yeah. Um, red light tends to disturb subjects the least. And if yeah. you have a particularly sensitive subject, it can be good to switch into that red light mode. So those are the three things I'd look for in a focus light. It's worth mentioning, um, but um, many strobes have built in that they come variety of terms but a lot often they're called focus lights um, aiming lights whatever we want to call them that are built into the strobes and, and I find that I don't have a great deal of success using those as what we're defining as a focus light mostly because my strobes quite often are not necessarily pointing at the subject or certainly not pointing directly at the subject um, and and so, so I, I mean, it, I've occasionally had situations where my main focus light run out of battery, and I've ended up using one. But, but it certainly isn't my my primary go-to. I would always have a separate light and not rely on aiming lights, focusing lights, whatever you call them on strobes. Um, they're, 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 I think they're too limiting because they they don't really. They, they, I say I don't always want to point my strobes at the subject. So. Yeah, yeah, it's really. I mean, I think it's really worth buying a good focus light and having a position to mount it. Um, if you're in an area that has lots of plankton in the water, particularly that's going to, you know, froth around the housing and the camera, it, um, if you put a section of strobe arm underneath that focus light, it yep. gets it up and away from the housing. And therefore, at least that that swirl of bugs is not between the lens and the camera. If you have your focus light right down on the port, which is obviously a very convenient place to have it from an aiming point of view. Um, all the bugs in, in, in the water will be there. If you lift it up, the bugs are up here and you get a much clearer view of the subject. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I think that makes 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 quite a difference. Um, it might be, I, I'm like you, Adam, I tend to dive with my only light on those dives being the one on the camera. Yeah. And then I know I've got two lights in my strobes as backups yeah. if I need, you know, if I run out of light. But I know quite a few people quite like to have a small torch clipped on their BC which can be useful to turn on so that they've got a light that they can shine at the back of their housing or the back of their strobes should something not be working the way they want it to and they can't remember where yeah. the button is Buttons or are, yeah. where the switch should be having a little torch on yourself can be very useful for for checking all of that out yeah. um even a glow stick you know yeah. um, you know is good enough for that um, I mean, I've, I've seen people actually take glow sticks to the back of their housings to, yeah. to light things up. I, I think that was, I think you, 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 from that, a really important kind of gear technique tip is to be really familiar with your camera controls. You know, there's nothing worse than, than not being able to remember which button to press in the dark when you can't really see them very well anyway. And um, so, yeah. so the more familiar you are, I mean, I think the, the modern housings with levers and things definitely make that a lot easier. Um, but um, but certainly, yeah. I mean, it's it's familiarity is 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 important. Um, so yeah. When... So for example, you know, I, I think there's often only one or two things you might want to change. Like some cameras, the you know the flash mode button is one of the buttons on the back, and it's the third one down. And if you know, you know, you, you don't need to know where every control is, mm. but if you think ahead of time, you can remember. Well, the one I use a lot that's not on a nice lever is the third one. You yeah. can find it at night very easily. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, I was going to say, when do we do night diving? The obvious answer is at night, isn't it? <laughs> um, it works but, best then, yeah. Don't yeah. yeah. But, um, so how, I mean, a lot of the time, when I think when, when night dives are being set up by dive resorts, they often want us to be in the water fairly early, really, in terms of night diving. What, what do you think about that, Alex? Yeah, I think that's, that's a, a really good point, is that, 
you know, it's well known in, in marine biology terms that you have this transitional period between daytime species going to bed and nighttime species being fully awake. Mm. Um, and at the same time, it's also very well known that around the world, there's two, you know, that dive centers like to run night dives a bit early. First of all, it's easier for newer divers to get used to a night dive if yeah. there's still a bit of ambient light go around when people are getting in the water. Oh. Also, the earlier you run a night dive, the earlier the staff gets finished for the day. But I have to say that actually, I think with a lot of dive centers, it's the first reason. It is actually easier for people to get used to a night dive by going in when there's still some light and diving through to complete darkness. The downside of that approach is that if you've ever been on those sort of night dives, you'll realize that we saw the good stuff at the end. That's because the good stuff was just coming out at the end. So yeah. it's well worth waiting through that transition period. Yeah. You don't need to wait hours and hours and hours. These nocturnal species, they want to maximize their foraging potential. Yeah. They don't wait for it to get dark, then wait three hours and then come out. Yeah. They, they they wait for it to get dark, wait for it to get properly dark, and then they come out. So it, it, that half an hour wait can make a really big difference. I've done night dives, you know, very late at night, and you really don't see a lot that's very different. Yeah. You know, yes, you can do double night dives and you get twice as much night dive time in. But as long as you've waited till it's properly dark and in the tropics, if I can just about remember what the tropics are like, it gets dark so quickly that actually those animals are adapted to come out quickly. Here in the UK, it's 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 just past midsummer at the moment. It's light, super late. And it's also it get, takes so long to get dark here, you know, that it's it's you know, you probably have to wait much longer after sunset, um, although the animals with such small windows are probably coming out certainly with land animals you know like like badgers or something there they come out you know it, the night is so short they have to come out in daylight at this time of year i yeah. don't know if we get the same underwater actually i don't know if you do a sort of a, a nine in the evening dive at the moment in the uk whether you actually get nocturnal species coming yeah. out like you would with a badger but mm, interesting yeah mm. um so um and then i guess we should probably talk about what are good subjects to try and capture what, what what are some examples of great night diving subjects alex well I, I would say the first thing i always look for on night dives is color hmm. i think when, when when you dive in the day you notice how you know everything is, is is blue or green to look at when you dive at night everything is bright and colorful hmm. and i like that to drive a lot of my photography at night hmm. um i generally want to photograph species that maybe i don't get to see as much during the day you know, so whether that's, you know, obviously, you know, in a black water environment, you're you're seeing species that are, are living at depth during the day. So that's obviously yeah. an example or they're just too difficult to find during the day. Um, yeah. But on a reef or muck dive situation, you might have species that are living in the sand or hiding in the reef during the day and they're out. So it's a great opportunity to work those species. There are a few species that I avoid photographing at night. And actually, um, one of those I mentioned earlier, um, you know, some of that, I think seahorses and pipefish. They're not the biggest fans of being photographed at night. And so I think if there's subjects that you're photographing at night that are reacting and clearly don't seem happy with the photo photography, it's it's best to leave them alone. I think every photographer who is maybe or every diver probably is at some point, you know, woken a fish that's asleep and seen it swim off in a in a hurry. And I think there are certain subjects that you you know, you as a photographer you probably go, I'm gonna disturb these, I should give them some space. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there's so many great night dive subjects, whether it's, you know, sneaking up on a sneaking fish and doing pattern details of the scales, whether it's the shrimps and crabs that are out and about, or whether it's those, you know, special night dive encounters, you know, around the world where a particular ha behavior happens, whether it's mantas coming in to feed on plankton or sharks out on the reef. Those can be yeah. very exciting dives to do at night um, yeah. as well. So, it's, but yeah, all of them fall into that, you know, night category. Yep. And it's something I really like to have in my pictures. Yep. Perfect. And um, speaking of pictures, Alex, um, where can people see examples of your night photography? Um, well, I'm, I'm on Instagram as Alex Mustard One, but I think you can also see, you can see, probably see the night diving photos better on my website, which is www.amustard.com. Yep. And on there, there's a search box on the front page. And if you type night into that, it'll bring up all the pictures with night tagged in them. So the majority of them are night dive pictures. Sometimes yeah. there are the odd fish or something that's called like, you know, um, midnight snapper. And that yeah. will come up type night in or, 
Um, I can't think of a longer word with the word knight in, um, yeah. but I'm sure there is. Um, uh, I've not dived in the poor knights, thankfully. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> thankfully, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, um, yeah, but, that, but yeah, you'll see a lot of night dive pictures there. And there's a mix of wide angle and macro. I do like doing wide angle at night. I think it's it can be very creative and very interesting. Fantastic. So head on over. If you're planning to do some night diving, head on over, have a look, get some inspiration. Um, and obviously there, there's lots of other sorts of inspiration as well. So so have a look at what other people have been doing. It's always a good way of figuring out what's, what's a good thing to do. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. And again, thanks to Naughty Camp for sponsoring this episode. We really appreciate our sponsor support. Thank you all very much for watching. And please add any comments or suggestions in the comment section below. And drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.